welcome to another season of Kids Corner. I'm your host, Ryan Maliar. Today we have a very interesting show for you. By show of hands, how many of you watch cartoons? Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> now, our guest today works on cartoons and animations by doing the sound, engineering, and designing. Mark Bazerman has been working for Pullman Sound Company for the past 13 years. He's going to explain to us how sound is done in cartoons and how exactly sound is designed. Please help me welcome Mark to the show. So Mark, how did you get interested in the field? Uh, when I was at school learning about recording, I wanted to be a music engineer. Then there was a course that um, we did sound for picture. And once we started doing that, I fell in love with it. Just that you can create new worlds from where nothing exists. Did you have any jobs before this? Not in sound, except I uh, used to do recording in my parents' basement. We had a studio where I recorded my band and friends' bands. Uh, how did you get into recording sound for animation specifically? Um, we, where I was working, we were doing sound for commercials, radio and TV, and we decided that we want to do more long format, and something that interests myself and the owner of the company was animation. We were all in love with cartoons as kids, so we thought it would be fun to do that for a living. Is it complicated to learn? Not a, a little bit, but it's really a sensibility that you learn what sounds to put where and timings and what parts of sounds to use. Um, did you take any classes to learn how to do this? Only when I was at school, but they don't really have some classes for cartoons per se. <laughs> it's kind of, we learned it as we were going. Um, how do you design the sound? Well, what happens in the beginning when we start a new cartoon, we get storyboards from the producers of the show, and we sit through it and talk about what their ideas are for the sound of it and what our ideas are, and just really think what's their world, what are they living in, and what can we do to enhance it and ac accentuate the, the, the feelings of the moment. Uh, Couldn't get that out. <laughs> What kind of equipment do you use to make the sounds and record them? Nowadays, it's all computer-based. It's all digital audio workstations. Um, and also, we use a lot of samplers to manipulate the sound. Samplers are digital audio recorders that will record a, s a small section of sound. And in there, we can then reverse it, change the filters of the sound. So it can just take the sound. And what you might think is so and running can now be transferred to something else. You can make it lower sounding or higher pitch, play faster, play in reverse. And then you p on the keyboard, you can play up and down the scale. And at the same time, you can combine them and make it a whole new sound. Um, do you have, is there ever a time where you have to make new sounds that you don't already have recorded? Yeah, that's, a, that's called Foley. And what happens is we'll have the picture set up and a lot of footsteps are done that way and it's something that's not in the sound effects library and one person will be recording it and the other person will be in the, the Foley booth um, watching the picture and mimicking everything that's happening on screen. What steps are, uh, are there in seeing a cartoon from the beginning all the way to completion? Uh, there's uh, about four or five steps from going back to when they write the script it starts off after they have the idea, the writers take it and write it out. They will go through various revisions, and then a storyboard artist or artist will then draw it out and then think about not just the dialogue, but how much time has to happen in between for any action. So they'll time it out and then draw out every frame for, for say, a, a half hour cartoon is 22 minutes long. So it's a, it's a lot of drawing to get done. Then after that, they'll come into our studio and record the voices. Then after that, it gets sent out to a lot of animation is drawn in Korea. So it gets sent to Korea, or it will be um, done in-house at the animation studio. And that takes about three or four months to do. <coughs> it's a lot of drawing, especially with the old style cell animation, where everything's by hand. Um, then it will come back to us about three or four months later, and that's when we start our next process, which is the viewing, going through spot, what we call spotting the show, looking for what sound effects are needed. Um, and then we'll start putting the sound effects into the show. 
there's usually a, once we have it, it's about a week turnaround to the show. And then as we're doing the sound effects, the music house is working on the music. And then hopefully on time they send us the music and we'll add that into and then start the mix process. Um, as far as your job concerned, how hard is it matching the voices of the people doing the voices of the cartoons to the actual cartoon itself? Because don't they have to match like the, the mouth movement with the... Not really. Um, the way animation is recorded, the voices are recorded first. first okay. They'll have the storyboards so that they can see the, the action that's going to happen, but the animation then is done to the voices. Uh. It's only when after the video is all done that they say, well, we don't like that line or we don't like the way the actor read it, that the ADR process will happen, which is automatic dialogue replacement, where the actors will come back into the studio and watch the video and even if the line changed to different words, have to fit it into the mouth movements that were done to the original line. Uh, so what's your favorite part of the job? I, I like putting the sound effects in and designing the sound. To me, there's Doing that for a living can't be bad. Oh. It's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, how does someone get involved in your field? Um, going to school for, for sound recording. And there's not many places that do animation, but if it's something that you enjoy, you look out, look up the um, studios that do it, and then get in contact with them. And every studio is looking for interns, like during summer breaks, and they always hire high school kids to come in and help out and that's a good start. Now I hear you brought some things to show us. Uh, can you tell us what the first thing is? Yeah this is a clip from Sheep in the Big City on Cartoon Network. Um, this is how we get the animation back. It's just with the voiceover and actors talking. This is before we add anything to it. Okay let's take a look. The Big City, a hotbed of high-tech technological technology. There's technology for communication. Freddy? Freddy, can you hear me? Barely. There's some nut next to me screaming his head off. Technology for finance. Yay! Even technology for personal hygiene. Hey, look! There's Jeep enjoying the convenience of a high-tech can opener. And when I say enjoying, I really mean having a miserable time. <laughs> Ouch! That's gotta hurt! All right, well, that was the first clip. Now, once it, it gets back to you, what's the first thing that you have to add to this cartoon? We start with the sound effects. We'll do um, a spotting session to look at what's needed for each show. And then we will go through, and one of the editors, engineers, will start adding all the sound effects. Like in that clip, there's the sounds of the ATM going. Um, and then it kind of looks like um, the wheel going. And when the dancers come in, and that's the, the first step. Are there different styles of sound effects that are used for different kinds of cartoons and shows? That yeah, there's classic animation sounds that are like the Hanna-Barbera um, or the old Warner Brothers style with the, well, the slide whistles mm -hmm. and stuff like that. We have libraries of that and then we also have a wide variety of slide whistles that we'll play also <laughs> if we uh, feel that it needs something a little bit different. Then there's more, a lot of the cartoons nowadays also have a lot of natural sounds. And so we also have a big variety of those. We actually have about 35,000 sound effects wow. on our computer server that's available at any given moment to access them. We're always adding to that as we make new sounds. Okay, so what we're going to see now is the cartoon that we just saw, but with sound effects added? Yeah, this is the next pass. This is when we start putting all the different sounds in to start bringing it to life. It, You'll see that adds a little weight to the animation. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take a look. The big city, a hotbed of high-tech technological technology. There's technology for communication. Freddy? Freddy, can you hear me? Barely. There's some nut next to me screaming his head off. Technology for finance. Yay! 
even technology for personal hygiene. Hey, look! There's Jeep enjoying the convenience of a high-tech can opener. And when I say enjoying, I really mean having a miserable time. Okay, so what we just saw was uh, the same cartoon that we saw before, but with sound effects added, which I think really added a lot to the cartoon. Um, no, it definitely helps yeah. move the story along and points out little parts of action that you might not notice, like his teeth gleaming. There's that little bell that comes out. <laughs> yeah, and that's actually a classic, talking about the classic sounds. Okay, so after you, you add the sound effects, what's the last step? The, the last step is we'll get the music in from the composers um, on this cartoon, it's um, an outside composer. On another series we're doing, actually our staff composer is doing the, the music, which is a little bit easier because he's in-house. Um, but we'll get the music from the, the composer and then put that in with the sound effects and the dialogue and we'll start mixing the show. Okay, well let's take a look at that. The Big City, a hotbed of high-tech technological technology. There's technology for communication. Freddy? Freddy, can you hear me? Barely. There's some nut next to me screaming his head off. Technology for finance. <laughs> Even technology for personal hygiene. Jeep enjoying the convenience of a high-tech can opener. And when I say enjoying, I really mean having a miserable time. Ouch! That's gotta hurt. So the music adds even more to it, I guess you could say. Yeah, it brings the emotion for the action that's happening in the scene. In the, uh, the beginning, when the dancers come out, it really brings that party sound in there. Mm -hmm. and then when Sheep is kind of going down the road, it gives a little bit of an action feel to it. So you can really change the emotion of what's going in the scene. You could put different music in a particular scene and completely change the feel of it. OK, Mark, well, we're going to take a quick break and then come back and get some questions from the audience. Stay tuned, Kids Corner will be right back. There is a better way to have fun with history. Teddy, you're not even trying. Visit americaslibrary.gov. Log on, play around, learn something. Gotta be cool. Be cool. Be cool about fire safety. Yeah, yeah that's the rule. Hey, to be, be cool. cool about fire safety. The most important thing for you and your parents is to have an escape plan. Have two ways out of your room or house in case one is blocked by fire. Have a meeting place outside of your house so everyone knows that no one is inside. Practice the plan because just having a plan is no good if you don't practice it. Gotta be cool. Be cool about fire safety. Welcome back to Kids Corner. We're talking with Mark Baserman, who works for Poem and Sound Productions. Does anyone in the audience have any questions for Mark? Besides for uh, Sheep in the Big City, what other, or, uh, what other cartoons do you do sound for? We do sound for Little Bill, um, PB&J Otter, Doug, and Courage the Dog. <laughs> and also we do a lot of, uh, for Disney animation, we do a lot of their voice recordings. We won't mix the shows, but um, any of their actors that are in New York City will record through a digital uh, phone line and they'll record in Los Angeles through us. So we do shows like Teacher's Pet, The Lion King, um, well actually Timon and Pumba, that one's called, and what's the other one? I forgot. <laughs> yeah, I, I blanked. Um, what do you consider when you're adding the music in? 
because I, I'm sure there's there's such a big variety of sound that you can choose from. So you know. Well, the well, the music is really the um, the composer goes through with the director and the producers of the show to look for what's the the emotion of the scene or the action and. For certain parts, for certain characters, will have their their theme. Like sheep has a theme, and they'll use that in um, um, different shows for when uh, sheep might come into a to a, a scene. And then they'll add any incidental that needs to be done. What are your favorite char uh, cartoon characters? Oh, Bugs Bunny, definitely Bugs Bunny, and the the Simpsons. Can't can't beat the Simpsons. What's the most basic equipment you would need to make some high quality sound effects? Um, just a microphone and uh, high quality, mm -hmm. just a cassette player. But with computers nowadays, the the programs that are that come with your computer are like what kind of program would be good for that? Um, any digital recording program like Logic Audio, Pro Tools, which Pro Tools is free at their website. You can download an uh, 8-track version um, of it, and that's one of the industry standards. And that will, if someone's interested in learning sound, it's a great way to learn because you can just download the program, and 90% of studios use that program. Um, how did it feel the first time you went in to um, um, actually um, uh, do the sound effects thing? How does it feel? How did it feel the first time you did it? Oh, it's it's fun. I was just amazed that I could do something like that and that I was actually working, that people call that work. And here I am just sitting here going, hmm, what should go in there? And listen to sound effects and kind of like, oh, is it a plop or, you know, a, a bang or something? And just <laughs> sit there and put it in and go, oh, that doesn't work. Try another one. <laughs> okay. And we sit there all night doing that. Do you more often um, use uh, sounds that are already made in the library, or do you usually make them? Uh, it depends on the show. It's it's depending on what's happening. I would say it's a little bit more on sounds that are made already, and then we'll just enhance with what we need to, because we've been doing animation for probably eight, ten years now. So a lot of stuff that we've made in the past also we can reuse and we might just have to modify a little bit, which we can also do in editing. So did you start from nothing, or did you start from like a uh, couple of sounds from somewhere else or something? Yeah, there's libraries. When, uh, when I first started doing sound, it was all on records, on vinyl LPs. So you had to, to find the sound, just pick up the needle and push it, and then it turned to CDs. And now it's on the internet. There's companies where you can just download from the internet. And we have it on our in-house intranet, where, like I was saying before, we have like 35,000 sounds and growing. Um, every month, we just keep buying what, whatever's new, just to have everything that we can get are our hands those on. those sounds, are they like organized into categories, like bings and plops? And yeah, I imagine it take forever to find the sound if they weren't organized. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, there's categories, subcategories. And then we can go in there and make our own categories also, if I have certain sounds that I like to use all the time, I can put in a keyword mark, and then every time I want to go just to my sounds, it will come up like that. So yeah, we lost if we had to do that. <laughs> what was the first cartoon you did the sound for? That was uh, Doug, when that first came on the air about 10 years ago. That's when I was working nights. <laughs> I just watched one this morning. Uh -huh. I haven't watched it in years. Um, for a 30-minute episode, how long does it take to put in all the music? Like, you were saying 22 minutes, but I think that's for the, I guess... The actual show is 22 minutes, the rest is uh, right. uh, commercial time. So, so the, for h how long does it take to, you know, put in the music for, you know, 30-minute episode? Um, we usually have a week turnaround mm -hmm. to, to get it out, so everything has to be done in that week. We have a, a crew during the day and then also a night crew now that will oh, wow. handle a lot of the work. Cause Starting this month, we'll be posting three cartoons at the same time, which I believe is the first that we've had that many in at once. I'm not sure if you would know this, but do you know if um, the, the companies that actually make the cartoons and send them to you, do they, like, are they, do they still make them or do they make them all in advance and then send them to you? Well, they're... Like, do you ever get one, more than one episode 
uh, at a time. Oh yeah, yeah, they'll be they'll be overlapping because once the first one starts coming back, um, it depends on their schedule and if the animation house is uh, um, ahead of schedule. And sometimes we might have a show in for an extra week or two while we're still working on one, but we can then look at the other one and start preparing for it. And sometimes we get ahead of ourselves too, which is nice for when it gets busy. Are you still working on sound for a show right now? Yeah, right now we're working on a show for Disney called Stanley. And Sheep starts again soon. And also Little Bill. So those are the three that we're working in. In a couple of weeks, they all start hitting. Um, what was your favorite show to animate? My favorite show? Probably Doug, because there's a lot of action in there every time. He went into his yeah. alter ego. That was a lot of fun to put all the superhero effects in. How many times did you have to do this Skeeter bleep bleep thingy? Uh, that's done by the, um, the actor, Fred Newman. That's all his, um, his, his voice, uh, voice sounds. And he also did a lot of the sound effects in, the, in Doug were his vocalizations, that he would just do these weird sounds. And he can do all these little, well, he does a lot better than me, but it's like <laughs> a word dripping. And he can do, he, he's got books out on making mouse sounds. And it's really organic. <laughs> and also part of Doug's music track was his organic sounds. So that show had a unique feel with Fred Newman, with what he could do with his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> How many shows have you created so far? Um, there's about uh, hello. There's about six or seven that we've worked on so far over the years, with a couple new ones coming in this season. Um, now, do you do mostly work for the Cartoon Network and Disney, or are there other, do you ever do like private industry, like, like cartoon movies, uh, uh, cartoons for commercials, or other things like that? Yeah, it's, it's, it, it's varied. Um, it depends on our client, which is the show's producers, where they're sold to. Um, right now, a lot of it has, happens to be Disney and the Cartoon Network, but we've also done animation for commercials. We're just working on this. Time Warner Cable, I don't know if I should say that on this channel, um, uh, commercials where they took the old Warner Brothers characters, Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, <laughs> and put them in selling their Roadrunner stuff. So that was cool because that was kind of like going back to the classic animation. You know, doing sound for Bugs Bunny is, is, is kind of a dream of mine. <laughs> so do you think you can get me a job maybe? Oh, sure. Make some, I can do make lots some noises. I can do lots of stuff. Let's hear you. I can sing. Wait. Ah, uh, and I can, I can do sound effects. I, boing. You got a job. I can oh, do more. 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 Plop. <laughs> Wait, try try a little bit lower. Plop. And a little bit higher. Plop. Down. Plop. Up. Plop. <laughs> we got a singer in the making. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe I'll stick with the kids' corner. Uh, uh, thank you so much for being a part of our show. I'll never watch cartoons the same way again. <laughs> and thank you all for watching. If you have any questions or comments or show ideas for Kids Corner, you can write to us at 455 Hose Lane, Piscataway, New Jersey, 08854. Thank you. See you next time. <laughs> the Big City, a hotbed of high tech, technological technology. There's technology for communication. Freddy? Freddy, can you hear me? Barely. There's some nut next to me screaming his head off. Technology for finance. <laughs> Even technology for personal hygiene. Hey, look. There's Jeep enjoying the convenience of a high-tech can opener. And when I say enjoying, I really mean having a miserable time. Ouch! That's gotta hurt.